Hello there guys, what is going on? Sonna Chelsea back here again for another edition of Added Time, answering your questions that you kindly submitted for today's video. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. But let's get into your questions. Firstly here with Baggy TV who asks, your thoughts on fans celebrating the injury of opposition players? Of course, you're referring to Christian Pulisic's, a small minority of Arsenal fans celebrating his injury, unfortunately, on Saturday night. It's despicable, it's disgusting, it's horrible to see. It's the lowest of the low. I think it reflects really poorly on the individuals who did it. I would never do it. You know, I remember a few weeks back, Eric Bailly having that injury against Chelsea for Man United in the FA Cup semi-final. And of course, just major concern whenever a player goes down like that, especially concussion-wise. Um, but even if it's not, you know, if it's, you know, hamstring injury, you know, how devastating that is for the player at the time. You know, they're just a human being. I just don't understand it. And it, it's got nothing to do with tribalism or supporting your club, hostility or banter, as some people would refer to it. It's just, it's lowest of the lowest, really horrible behavior. And we need to condemn it, to be honest. Lenny asked, do we really need to spend money on having after yesterday's game I'm not sure which part of the team we are strong at we have a lot to do in this transfer window if you asked me this question maybe in March I would have agreed with you you know asked that question you know do we need to sign another central midfielder because I did think it was our strongest area but seeing Havertz, seeing the unique talent Havertz is. Um, I don't like using this term a lot because I think it gets overused to, to describe young players and I think it does a lot of damage to young players. Having said that, I do think it's it's right and, and probably fair to call Havertz a generational talent. I think he could be absolutely transformative for Chelsea. It's a unique opportunity here. You see how serious Chelsea are because the likes of Real and Bayern can't spend that much at the moment, especially Real Madrid. Of course, Bayern just spent a lot on uh, Leroy Sane, so they're out of the race for Havertz. It's a unique opportunity, a bit like with Eden Hazard in 2012. Havertz could become Chelsea's best player, so I think it's right we need to spend on him. And spending on him doesn't mean that Chelsea won't invest in other areas. As we've seen, Chelsea are very serious on a new goalkeeper, on a new centre-back, on a new left-back. That won't halt their progress. Of course, it will mean selling players out of the club, which may be difficult, but I do think you know passing up on Havertz, I think at this point, would be a mistake in my opinion. Sam Bav asks, can you discuss the formation for next season? 4-3-3, 4-4-2 or 3-4-3? I think a bit like this season, Frank likes to be very flexible with his systems and I think wants to make Chelsea an unpredictable team which I like I don't think Chelsea should become predictable and I think it's you know a variety of things formation tactics but also you know personnel having you know different areas of threat and attacks that Chelsea hopefully will have more next season to make us a much more dangerous team going forward um, but I do think next season hopefully and I think Frank wants this I do think you'll see a more settled formation most weeks um, based on personnel and I think hopefully Chelsea get there you know especially in the, of course the forward areas Chelsea have got some players in now with Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, but of course Kai Havertz as well. Also defensively, if we get a new centre-back, a new goalkeeper, a new left-back, I think Frank will revert to the 4-3-3. I think based on what I saw for a few weeks at the start of Project Restart, where you saw N'Golo Kante as the holding midfielder with two number eights basically in front of him, um, I think that's what Frank wants, especially in that midfield dictating the play, seeing how I think Frank finally decided that he wants a natural sort of DM there. Whether Kante is the best player for that role, maybe Kovacic could fill in there and Kante maybe a little bit further forward. We don't know yet, but I think that's what you'll see more. I think Frank, because he constantly stresses flexibility, I think you will at times see a 3 for 3 If we keep a player like Marcus Alonso at times because of injury, suspension or whatever, Frank may revert to that. You know, you may see maybe a game against Spurs where the 3 for 3 has worked really well. He may revert to that at times, but I think mainly it will be the 4 3 3 next season, in my opinion. Callum asked, how many goals would you say would be a good first season for Timo Werner? Difficult to say because um, individually, you know, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? How the team works, you know, if Timo scores 15 goals next season, which would maybe be considered under par, of course, considering what he's done in the Bundesliga. But, you know, the likes of Ziyech score a bundle of goals, Pulisic, you know, I think Pulisic for me is a massive game changer for Chelsea. If he continues his form, continues to score goals and maybe gets, you know, in his current rate, I could see him getting like 20 goals next season. I don't think that's a ridiculous uh, prediction to make because he's on fire at the moment, really, for Chelsea. Um, maybe it doesn't matter as much. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can vary out the goals a lot, but you do want your, your main goal scorer predominantly to be your striker. That's the, the main positive, of course, is, is I think you want your, your number nine to be your top goal scorer, like Tammy is been this year I think 20 20 25 is a realistic goal for Timo to set it's how he settles in a Premier League how all that works how we can get him firing in the system but I think based on the quality of the player the confidence of the player I, I wouldn't put that past him next season and if he does Chelsea could do some special things next year if Timo is scoring that amount of goals so I think probably 20 to 25 would be the rate I'd be predicting and hoping for 
team by Werner next season. Jerry asked, did you see a difference between how Chelsea played this season as compared to Sarri ball? Looks very similar to me. Do you think Sarri gets a bad rap? I do think he gets a bad rap. If you've been following this channel and following my work uh, pretty much since, you know, last year, I was always very fair to Maurizio Sarri. I thought, you know, I think at times he was harshly treated by uh, sections of the Chelsea fan base. I didn't want to see him go at the end, but I think, you know, I don't want to rehash all that stuff. You know, that's, that's such an past. Now, on your question, which is an interesting one, in some ways similar, yes. I think that in a positive way, Frank has continued Chelsea's style change, basically. Chelsea looking to be more proactive, more progressive on the pitch. We're more an attacking side now. We're not a reactive side anymore, not as pragmatic counter-attacking as we used to be. Chelsea now want to be on the front foot, which I think Frank needs to stick with. Just because we need to get better structurally in defence, I don't think Frank should, you know, revert to, you know, reactive football, go defensive, you know, try and make Chelsea just a, a defensive team now. Chelsea need to keep on going more progressive. It's just about fixing certain areas in the team to make us better and more cohesive and more safe and protected in defense but um i don't think it's similar because i think that frank wants a much more direct style of play i think just you know if you're talking about possession stats if you're looking at possession stats yes chelsea in some ways are similar i think that's just natural to the players we have now um matteo kovacic Jorginho, you know players like that that are more progressive you know ball winners in the central of the park you know they want to be on the ball chelsea's you know when we don't have a lot of possession anymore it's a striking stat because it's not what Chelsea have been doing for the past two years. And I don't think that's a negative thing. But Frank obviously wants us to be more pressing. We're much more gung-ho. We're much more on the front foot, which is does have clear risks at the moment as Chelsea have been exploited in transition over and over again. And it's Frank working on that next season to perfect that much better. Um, Sarri was much more about controlling the ball to, you know, help us out defensively. Our defence was holding on to the ball, um, which helped us a lot in games. And, it, you know, it's a lot more methodical. But, you know, that doesn't mean to say Sarri's intention was just, you know, endless ball possession. It was about moving the opposition about, like, you know, very much similar to Pep Guardiola's philosophy. I think Frank's intention is to make Chelsea much more faster, much more aggressive much more pressing mason mount for me represents that at the moment and when we've seen our best performances this season they've been that they've been very harassing the opposition getting in their faces which was a lot different to Mauricio Sarri style so in some ways in the sense of the intention is to attack which i think is positive it is slightly different to what it was last year in my opinion sjxe asks who do you think will have the better first season ziash or verna of course similar to a question i answered earlier in the video um another difficult question because so many things you know how players set in the Premier League who settles quicker um, of course you'd hope both have brilliant seasons and of course you know what are you suggesting that by you know Ziyech could be as we know a much more creative player he may not score as many goals but he may set up Timo Werner which could help them both in the season I'd go Timo Werner just because of a striker um, I think Timo may be able to set a, settle quicker and, and based on what Frank wants from his forward, I think he may he may find it easier to to settle. But you never know in the Premier League, really. I mean, some players, as we as Chelsea have proven, and I think Werner has to sort of break the mould of Chelsea strikers. And I'll probably write an article or make a video about this as we get close to the start of next season. Because, but, but Ziyech as well, I think that the physicality of the league, I think is going to be a massive test for Hakim Ziyech. Can he deal with that? That's something that's been thrown at him in the past, which he's going to have to deal with. And, and I'm sure teams will be trying to target. Christian Pulisic, I think, has dealt very well with that. Eden Hazard in the past has dealt well with that. It's it's one of those things where I think you can get round it. But Ziyech will have to deal with that. I'd still say Timo Werner, because I just think Werner will add that clinical edge to Chelsea you need and he'll probably be seen as having a better season but I think that Ziyech creatively could be massive for Chelsea unlocking tight defences and lastly TDM asks if Aspilicueta's injury lasts till the start of next season and we sell the likes of Jorginho who can you see being our captain I think I've answered this question uh during lockdown before and, and it's a difficult one to answer because of the first team, you know, you're asking a very good question. You know, Jorginho, even if he stays, is Jorginho going to be a regular starter for Frank Lampard? Is Dave going to be a regular starter for Frank Lampard in the future of Reese James coming back? As I was saying earlier in the video with the 4 3 3, I think Reese James is the long term fullback there. It's difficult and leadership is something Chelsea have lacked. You know, it, it's one thing Chelsea are crying out for. If Chelsea sign a dominant centre-back and that player becomes that leader, maybe they get the captaincy. Um, it's sometimes weird to think, you know, you'd give the, the captain's armband to a player just coming in. But based on the regular starting eleven, if it doesn't have Dave or Jorginho, Frank's going to have have to make a decision there. Preferably, and this is just bias based on what I've, you know, experienced with JT. I like having a centre-back as your captain because, of course, he can see more of the pitch than putting your striker 
striker as as captain. That's just you know personal preference for me. Um, I think it's difficult to tell, and, and I think that's a problem for Chelsea. Of course, thinking past you know Jorginho, the way he dictates play, the way he's very vocal on the pitch. You know, Antonio Rudiger maybe would be next, but his form has not been good enough to warrant him being a first team player next season. So it's very difficult, and I think that's something Chelsea need to address. And maybe bringing in that type of player this summer could fix that issue and could answer your question. So I know it's a bit of a cop out. I can't really answer that question for you. Maybe one of the younger players could take that, but I can't see in any of them really leadership qualities at the moment. Maybe Tamori in the future, but he's not very vocal at the moment. It is tough to answer, really, in my opinion. But that is it for this edition of Added Time. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Sonna Chelsea. Have a great day, and I'll see you again. Thank you.